right, what I have here is a 10 pound brisket. It's like nine and three quarter pounds. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna roast it. And this is gonna be our bulk cooking project for February. And um, we're gonna see how many meals we can get out of this brisket. Now this brisket is going to, to cook down considerably, but because it is beef, you're not gonna need as much meat um, to make like, we're gonna do probably, we're gonna have a main meal out of this with the brisket and potatoes and vegetables and things like that. And then we're gonna do a soup, a pizza, a sandwich. Several Mexican dishes. And we'll do tacos or burritos or maybe several of those. But we're gonna see how many meals we can get out of there. I am estimating between four and six meals for four people. And this brisket cost me $21 at the commissary. I have had this in my freezer since last March. So it's time to go ahead and cook it because it's taken up room because I have a new Nes uh, Nesco. I have a new Zacon order coming this coming week for chicken thighs and I'm gonna need to have room in my freezer for those. What we're gonna do is, this is just simple. I have roasted a brisket for you guys in the past and that video is super old, so it is time to go ahead and update that. So I thought, what better time? So I have my brisket and I have just, I listen, I took the whole stalk of celery, right? The whole bunch of celery and I just, um, cut the top off of it. And we're just gonna go ahead and put that right underneath our meat. And then I have about four carrots, and I did the same thing. I just cut the tops and the bottoms off of them, and I went in and I cut them in half. I cut them in half and then I split them so that they were flat on one side. And then I have one large yellow onion these are just aromatics. These are gonna flavor the meat. We made this homemade onion soup mix, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to liberally sprinkle it across the top of this brisket. All of the seasonings that you need are in here. And we probably used between a half and three quarters of a cup. It's just, you know, maybe a half a cup. I don't know that I made two full cups, so. So when you roast it, you want the fat cap up? You want the fat cap up when you roast it because fat is going to be um, what's gonna keep this meat moist. And as it cooks, it's going to coat, you know, and cook down into the good portion of the meat. And it's going to carry the flavor of all these spices. It's going to absorb the flavor of all these vegetables while it is roasting. And it's going to be absolutely fantastic. The only other things I want to add here that were not in my onion soup mix are, I want to add a couple of bay leaves, and this of course is completely optional. You don't have to do this. So if you don't have like whole ones, just put a few pieces in here. It's fine. It'll be great. Now rosemary is next. Now bay and rosemary, they're kind of in the same family. They're both uh, evergreen. And I'm, I am not a huge fan of rosemary, but with beef, I do like it. So we're just gonna sprinkle, I'd say a half a teaspoon. That's a lot of meat, and a half a teaspoon is okay. Just the right amount. Now, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna grab our aluminum foil. And you know me, I like to put a piece of parchment. This is personal preference, no worries. You don't have to do that. But I am going to go ahead and wrap this I'm just gonna go ahead and put some water in the bottom here. I would say at least two cups, maybe three or four. We're going to um, to braise this and you wanna make sure there's plenty of liquid in the bottom. Now you could use wine if you want. We're not huge fans of wine when we cook, um, but that's a personal preference. It has nothing to do with us not wanting to drink the alcohol. It's just that we don't really care for that flavor. You want this to braise low and slow for a good long time. Now this is gonna go in a 300 degree oven and we're gonna cook this for about eight hours until the meat is tender and we can slice it easily and that fat cap has cooked down and I'm gonna pop it in the oven now before church and I'll bring you back when it's time to take it out so you can see what it looks like. 
Okay, I put this in the oven at around 300 degrees um, at 8.30 this morning, and it is now 2 o'clock. We went to church, and we came home, and I did check it after we um, arrived home from church, and it needed like another hour, but it's been an extra hour and a half now, so it's perfect. I can pierce it with my fork, and it doesn't have a lot of resistance. I know that the meat is going to be just right, and... Now I'm gonna let this just hang out. I'm gonna cover it with the foil again. I'm just gonna let it hang out until at least an hour or two has gone by and then I'm gonna come back and we're gonna slice into it and I'll show you what it looks like then. But this is a lot of meat and this should be enough meat. I mean, yes, they're gonna have some fat on here that's not consumable, but um, for the most part, there should be enough meat here to give us several different meals because you're not going to use the, as much meat as you think. You don't need like a slab of meat every time you eat. So you're just going to use the meat in other things and make the meat stretch. So... And too bad you can't smell it. It smells amazing. It really does make your house smell wonderful when you get home from church and you smell this cooking. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to let this hang out, chill out, cool down. We're going to let the all those juices kind of retain in the meat and then we're going to come back and we're going to slice it and I'll show you what it looks like. We are ready to slice up our brisket. It has been sitting for a few hours while we got some things done. But I want to show you how to properly slice a brisket in case you didn't know. Brisket is a notoriously tough piece of meat. You need to cut it a very specific way. You need to cut it against the grain. I'm going to show you how not to cut it first. And if you come down to this end, if you slice straight across this grain here, you see how the fibers of the meat are running this way? You see how they're running straight this way? That is not how you want it because that's going to be tough when you go to chew it and it's not going to melt in your mouth. But if you cut it this way, which is against the grain, kind of like at a diagonal, it's going to be super tender and beautiful and you can see the difference. Here, I'll show you the difference. You see the difference. This is long and stringy. And this is compact because here we've got the fibers of the meat going this way and here we've got them going this way, the short way. This is the way you want to do it. That's how you make a brisket. Now I'm just going to cut this up. We're going to have this for dinner tonight. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that you learned something. And so the next time you see a brisket in the grocery store for a really good price, pick it up. And even if you can't use it right away, stick it in your freezer and then pull it out when you have time to make it because this is kind of an all day process. But if you like today's video, please consider giving me a thumbs up. And if you're not already, please hit that subscribe button. If you are a subscriber, as you hear me say all the time, please hit that notification bell button so that whenever we upload a video, you will get a notification from YouTube and you'll be able to come over and have a look. Because we don't want you to miss out on all the real food for real people, real easy recipes that we present all the time right here on our YouTube channel and straight from our kitchen. I hope you give roasting a brisket a try and I hope you enjoy our continued bulk cooking journey. And until next time, I'll see ya.